Hi, I'm Dr. John Gray. You probably know me by my book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And I wrote that book over 25 years ago. It's spread around the world. It was an idea whose time had come. Uh, particularly in our civilized world, people today want more romance, they want more happiness. And this is a shift from the old fashioned relationships of role mates, where couples basically had a traditional role where the man made the money and the woman had the children. And that was our main roles, but today, People want more. They want more love, they want more affection, they want more romance. And I wrote Men Are From Mars and it helped so many people improve their relationship by doing one thing, understanding how men and women sometimes show up very differently, particularly at times of stress. When we're under times of stress, women will tend to react one way, quite commonly the same way, and men another way. And these ideas I observed as a counselor for many years. However, now we have the biological evidence explaining how men and women react differently to stress. And this is really relevant today because with quarantine, with people staying at home, you would think that this creates an opportunity for intimacy, more love, and in some cases it has if couples had good communication skills that would lower stress. But most couples have communication skills that raise stress because they don't understand how men and women are different. So the ideas of Men Are From Mars were very helpful for couples who are in a more traditional relationship, how to get closer, how to experience lasting romance, passion, connection, forgiveness, resolving arguments. But today, that was 25 years ago. Today, things are different. The world has changed dramatically. Men and women are still misunderstanding each other because instinctively, we are different. Biologically, we're wired up to cope with stress differently. But there's a new stress, besides COVID, already this new stress has been growing over the last 25 years as evidenced by the increase of divorce and the increase of second marriage divorces and the increase of third marriage divorces. And even more evidence points to the fact that twice as many people are choosing not to get married. They don't even sustain a relationship because often we get in relationships because we wanna feel more love, more support. And how do we sustain that passion? When it goes away, people say, I want better. Is it possible? Can we even have better? Is that just in a fantasy? Actually, it's possible. In my marriage of over 33 years, we're able to sustain that passion because we had three basic insights. And these are the insights that I developed more in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus, because we have shifted gears from the more traditional role mate to soul mate. We're actually looking for that passion, for that love, for that intimacy at a higher level. But how to achieve that? Well, it turns out that the understanding of our differences becomes even more relevant, not just that we misunderstand each other and we have more conflict. No, if we wanna create the passion, we wanna create the opposites in a sense the part of me that's more masculine than my partner, the part of my wife that's more feminine than me. If we're able to maintain that masculine femininity, we're able to feel an attraction for a lifetime. And this is possible and couples want that. How to achieve that? Well, I mentioned there are three basic things. We need to understand, very important, that we all want the same thing. We want love, we want closeness, we want passion. But how to get there is gonna be different. Well, what is the difference? It's that we have to understand that men and women are different. And the third thing is we have to recognize that we are responsible for how we feel. We are responsible to open our hearts and then give from a place of openness, not to depend on our partners to open us up, but we are responsible to open our hearts and then to give more in the relationship. And if you give more from an open heart, you will get more. And today people want more, they wanna achieve more. There's nothing wrong with that. In a business, you wouldn't say, gee, you wanna be more successful, oh, you shouldn't want more success. In a relationship, you want more love, more passion, yes, you can have it, but you have to, as in a business, you have to learn and adapt to changing times. So what is this major source of stress that we're going through now? Long before COVID came along, long before quarantine came along, which is an additional stress. The stress is women have become more independent. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, that's progress. You see, we have two parts of us. Every person has two parts of them. We could call it for simplicity, a masculine part, a feminine part. I like to focus on the bio biological differences between men and women. It turns out that when men 
open their heart and feel good, feel proud, feel selfless, feel motivated, feel energetic. The best sides of men happen when their testosterone levels are 10 to 30 times higher than a woman's. Now this is simple science. You can measure a man when he's healthy, when he has libido, when he's in love, when he's feeling romantic, he's gonna have testosterone levels 30 times higher. Now it's not that testosterone's making him feel that way, it's what he's doing, it's what he's thinking, it's his behaviors at that time that are stimulating testosterone. So testosterone becomes a key insight into how do we bring out the best in men, let's teach men and let's teach women how to raise a man's testosterone and vice versa. What are the secret hormones to help women to feel good? Well, it's not such a secret. You go to any, it's common knowledge that when women have well-being, when they're happy, their female hormones are 10 times higher than a man's, 10 times higher. And if a woman is to fall in love and feel passion, her female hormones are 20 times higher than a man's. Now you can look at the hormone tests for this. It's the estrogen levels for part of the month for a woman or the progesterone levels for part of the month for women that are significantly different than a man's if she experiences well-being and happiness. So if we can find hormonal balance within ourselves in a relationship, we will always experience an attraction and interest in our partner. We tend to be more heartfelt. We tend to be able to remember the good relationship skills that we're learning. We're learning how to be better listeners. We're learning how to appreciate our partners more. We're learning how to find forgiveness. We're learning how to make up after arguments. This is the knowledge which is coming out more and more. The problem is we don't do it. And why don't we do it? Because our brain becomes hijacked from remembering to do those things from our ability to do those things. Even if we know it's wrong, we still can't do it. Why? Because the brain gets hijacked by stress. When we're experiencing stress, what's happening inside is a hormonal shift in our body that controls the brain. If your hormones are in balance, meaning a man typically would have 10 to 30 times more testosterone than a woman, and a woman would have 10 to 20 times more estrogen than a man. For example, when those hormones are in balance, the blood flow in the brain goes to the prefrontal cortex where we're capable of experiencing empathy, understanding, forgiveness, generosity, selflessness. All of our best human characteristics can evolve and develop and grow and we can access that resource within us when blood flow goes to the front part of the brain. That's the prefrontal cortex. However, the rest of the brain the limbic system and the instinctive part of the brain, back in the very back part of the brain, when they become activated, blood flow stops to the prefrontal cortex and we become victims of our own conditioning. We become victims of our own primitive behaviors of an eye for an eye, where we think only of ourselves. We're not capable of thinking, gee, you know, when I yell at my partner, what's the effect that has? How's that gonna affect our relationship? Actually, yelling at your partner is one of the worst communication skills you can ever have. As soon as your partner raises their voice, what we should do at that moment is go into different rooms. It's like boxers, time out, ring the bell, go out, raise your hands up, and go into the other room. Today, what we're seeing when people go through quarantine, the worst aspects of who we are come forth. And what are those worst aspects? That's a conditioning that we have little control over if we're not in the prefrontal cortex of our brain. What that conditioning is, anything we observed our parents do when they were under stress or anything their grandparents did and their parents all the way back. Conditioning passes through our genes, not just what we observe. This is the new science. So how do people react when they're under stress? Well, we all do it differently, but typically men have one reaction, women have one reaction if they're coping well with stress. So what would be coping well with stress look like? Well, with an understanding of how men and women are different in our abilities to cope with stress, it becomes a simple way to look at a very complicated problem that even the masters in this world, the most successful people in this world have not figured out. We look at so many people having divorces and problems today, and countries having war. This is all just an expression of our own inability to experience empathy, compassion, generosity, forgiveness, understanding, development of the self, this is all within ourselves. World peace begins peace in the home. If we cannot achieve it at home, there's no hope for the world. And the great news is we can achieve it at home 
if we understand these basic things. We all need love, that men and women need love differently, and we're responsible for how we react in relationships. All of our reactions, if they're not loving, are our conditioning. It just comes automatically. We respond, react to situations without any thought. We must pause for a moment and reflect on, is this gonna be productive or is this not? And we're actually capable of changing our reactions over time if we're able to stay in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. But we're not able to if your hormones are out of balance. So what throws our hormones out of balance? What are some of the symptoms of hormonal imbalance? Well, whenever you're feeling independent and self-reliant, your testosterone levels go up. And this is great for men. Not as good for women, although it can make money for women to be independent, earn her own living, to have a sense of freedom. Those are all important things for women today. But it doesn't help her hormones unless she's able to balance that testosterone with estrogen-stimulating behaviors. Estrogen-stimulating behaviors is sharing emotions. It's being vulnerable. It's depending on your partner. It's asking for help in life, not feeling you have to do it all yourself. You know, in my experience of over 40 years counseling couples, whenever a woman is dissatisfied and unhappy, one of the things she will say over and over is, oh, there's so much to do, there's so much to do, there's no time for me. She basically is feeling, I have to do it all myself. That feeling of having to do it all myself stimulates testosterone. And when you're stimulating testosterone and not asking for help and getting help and feeling safe to ask for help, your estrogen levels go down, which then causes testosterone to go higher and higher. So the hormones are a little like, like a seesaw. If testosterone goes up, estrogen goes down. If estrogen goes up, testosterone goes down. So it goes like this. For men, our vulnerability is too much estrogen. If estrogen goes very high, our testosterone goes down. So we can learn, what are the behaviors that stimulate estrogen? What are the behaviors that stimulate testosterone? Well, it turns out to make very simple. I talk about 12 in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus, which is something that is a class, it's a study, is like we have, need to have more knowledge if we're going to be so successful in our relationships. But even in a short period of time, this understanding can make a huge difference to create lasting love, avoid conflict, and create happiness in your relationships, which is our number one goal, is to love each other. But how to love each other? We need to understand this difference between men and women. Then we need to take responsibility for how we feel. So let's look at some of the ways, some of the symptoms of hormonal imbalance. I looked at one, when women become very independent, they're making testosterone during the day, they're not making enough estrogen for their well-being. When women are happy, their estrogen levels are higher. If you're too independent, your estrogen levels go down. So that's the value of relationship for women, is that you can become interdependent in your relationship. So as a man, being independent stimulates his testosterone. When he becomes too dependent on alcohol to feel happy, or too dependent on watching TV to feel happy, what happens is his testosterone levels go down. But most importantly, when men become to emotional, their estrogen levels go very high, their testosterone goes down. And when they become too emotional, they become aggressive. Now, all aggression in men, which we think, oh, men are violent, men are dangerous. Yes, many men are. So let's look at what their hormones are when men are really behaving poorly. It turns out that when men are angry, for example, their estrogen levels are very high. Their testosterone is very low. What is going on there? Everybody always thought that it's high testosterone that causes men to misbehave. Actually, it's not at all. It's high estrogen. We don't want to feminize men. It just makes them more irritable, more grumpy, more passive, low libido, uh, addictive. All these th bad behavior in men comes from low testosterone. Wouldn't it be great, women, if you understood how to pump up a man's testosterone? Wouldn't it be great, men, if you learned that whenever you're feeling grumpy and irritable and argumentative or needing to yell or you feel angry, you don't feel love, you want to find your heart again? Well, how do you do that? Do something to increase your testosterone. It becomes very simple, something that's massively complex. We can simplify it down to understanding how we on our own can balance our hormones and how we can help our partners balance their hormones. And for women, what they can do when their mind is feeling like, Oh, I have so much to do, I can't, I have no time for me. I have no help, I have to do it all myself. 
that tendency of too much testosterone and not enough estrogen causes your mind to go into a fight or flight response or you're in a fight or flight response and it causes that hormonal balance. It goes back and forth. What happens is your brain, if you're a woman, goes into a bias of only looking at negativity. Your mind begins circling around and around and around on any mistakes your partner's made and you're incapable of remembering the good things about your partner. That bias is a human reactivity. When you're in danger, you're going to think of what can go wrong. You're not going to be thinking about how things can go right. So this is what happens for women. Under moderate stress, there's research that shows there's eight times more blood flow that goes to the hippocampus in the brain of a woman. Not a man, a woman. She will tend to remember everything wrong which has happened in the past and forget temporarily everything good he's ever done. Oh my gosh, he thinks, what has happened to my wife? She's just focusing on the negativity. I thought last weekend we had a great time, but now she's saying you never listened to me. What is she talking about? See, these are examples where we think my partner is crazy. No, they're just temporarily out of balance, okay? The hormones are out of balance. So what you can do at that time is help her to come back into balance. For example, if a woman is upset, what you have to know is if she can talk and talk to you about what's bothering her, that will stimulate estrogen. Whenever you talk about your feelings, whether they be positive or negative, it's gonna produce estrogen because feelings, emotions produce estrogen. And that's very important for women because when a woman is stressed, her testosterone levels are going up, protecting herself, I have to do it myself, no one will do it for me, it's all my, it's all my uh, I'm alone in the world. That feeling of no one's there for me. I have to do it all. That's her testosterone going up. Now, what's funny is when I feel, okay, nobody's going to do it. I have to do it. Then I kick ass, basically. I get up and do it, you know. Feeling that, that, that I have to do it is actually a blessing for males. But when a woman feels, I have to do it, I have to do it, her stress levels go up. Because she needs to feel, again, a mindset that helps estrogen get produced is I get to do. I enjoy doing. I love to do. Now, certainly in life, there's things we don't love to do and whatever. If you're a woman, you have to do certain things. It needs to be balanced by things you get to do, things you enjoy doing, things you love to do. And for women today, often feel guilty or they feel selfish thinking about, oh, what about me? I have to think about somebody else. So at those times, you can think beyond your normal thinking. Come back to this prefrontal cortex and go, hey, if I'm not happy, if I'm not doing things for myself, if I'm not taking time to get what I need to feel good, then my heart will close and I can't give the love that my partner needs. You see, it's the love that changes the world, but we cannot feel the love, we cannot communicate the love, we cannot give the love unless we take care of ourselves first. And for women, it means doing things that stimulate estrogen and also being aware of when she's out of balance. Whenever your mind is starting to look at, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, or you're beginning to feel this very common feeling that women have when their hormones are out of balance, is resentment. She starts to feel, I give more and I get less. I give more and I get less. I feel used. I feel not appreciated. I feel he doesn't see me. He doesn't listen to me. Your mind will start going around and around on those things. That is temporary amnesia that you'll go to. For fun, we can look at the hippocampus. That's the memory. Now, the truth is a woman's memory, the hippocampus, is actually twice as big in most women than a man. That answers one question that's hugely frustrating to women all the time is, how could you forget? She's always, how could you forget? I can't believe you forget. Was memory smaller? And under stress, men forget everything except one thing, what I'd have to do to solve a problem. And so everything else gets forgotten. For women under stress, they remember everything. You see, this is the difference of how we respond to stress. <clears throat> Eight times more blood flow for women to the hippocampus. So you can think about the hippocampus, the memory, as like a library. It remembers everything. And it has two stories. On the first story is all the good things that happen in her life. On the second story is all the good things that happen in her life, all the bad things that happen in her life. And when she experiences moderate stress, blood flow goes to the hippocampus, she gets in an elevator and goes up to the second story, and all she can remember at that time, all she sees in Technicolor are the mistakes he makes. How can she feel loving at that time? Because she's temporarily forgotten. And sometimes all it takes is just a few minutes for her to feel his support, his interest in her that will pump up the estrogen. 
So there's a dynamic that we learn about, like the importance of hugs. It's one of my main things I teach. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. I give my wife four hugs a day. I wake up, I give her a hug. And it's not just a hug. It's a six-second hug. It's a full-body gentle hug, not a sexual hug, but a full connection. Well, I'll connect with her. It takes six seconds, and you can measure a spike in a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin comes up in a non-sexual hug. It starts to happen around six seconds. So you get that little connection, and when the oxytocin goes up, why does that know? We know now that that will lower her stress levels. What does it do? It actually lowers her testosterone, which is too high, and raises her estrogen, and now she begins to feel the well-being that comes from high estrogen, but the doorway to raising her estrogen is oxytocin. This is your power, men. So four hugs a day looks like the first time, first thing in the morning I see her, I go for work, or she goes to work, I say goodbye and give her that six-second hug, come home, one of us, we meet again, six-second hug, we go to sleep, before that, always a six-second hug. You've got to do this regularly. Now, a secret for women is little things make a big difference. A man doesn't know that. See, these are the insights that come when you understand, basically, the ideas of men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and combine that with my book, Beyond Mars and Venus, which helps us to restore the balance. Men are from Mars is just understanding our differences. Beyond Mars and Venus is when women are more on their masculine side and men are more on their emotional side, how to bring the hormones back into balance. So it's a progression that we're seeing because the evolution of humanity occurs as each man and woman begins to embrace both the male and female side within them. You know, for me to be the best father to my children, the best husband to my wife, it means I'm independent, but I'm also dependent. My, I'm also detached, analytical, that's my male side, but I'm also emotional and vulnerable and considerate and nurturing. These are my male and female qualities together. But what happens is when we go too far out of balance, men will tend to go too far into their female, get too emotional, too grumpy, too addicted, all that, how to come back to the masculine. For women, they get too overwhelmed, too resentful, giving, doing, feeling isolated. How to come back to the female side where they become masters of asking for help and getting it. So now what we're seeing is during this huge experiment, which has never happened on the planet, where nobody can go out, and if you go out, you're with masks, and nobody can touch each other. Oh my gosh, this is creating havoc in relationships. It's actually exaggerating the problem, so we can actually see what a clear solution would be. This could be a time to really practice relationship skills to grow in our ability to love, but for many people without the knowledge, it's just bringing them down further, and they're thinking about divorce, and divorce rates are going up, home violence is going up. Why? You would think, oh, we have time together, but how do we communicate with that time together? How do we interact with that time together? And guess what? A healthy relationship does not require that we spend so much time together. It's the right balance. My philosophy is the 80-20 philosophy. 80% of your happiness needs to come from your life, not dependent on your partner. Then your partner has the power to take you from 80% to 100%. They can take you from feeling good to feeling great. And that's the power of your partner. It's like, think about the biology of the body. We all, we know we need good food in order to have all the vitamins in our body. We need vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are all bi different vitamins known to have benefits for us. Particularly vitamin D comes from sunshine. So we wanna make sure we get lots of sunshine. It's very helpful for generating vitamin D in our body. Fish can also do it. Now, let's say that you've got vitamin A, B, C, E, F, but no vitamin D. And suddenly you go out into the sun, oh, your, moon's, your mood is just gonna go, oh, I feel so fantastic, I feel great, this is wonderful. That's the missing vitamin. But let's say you have none of the other vitamins and you'll get plenty of sunshine, it's not gonna have any effect on your mood, no effect. Well, this is having 80% of your happiness coming from your life. So then you meet your partner, they're that vitamin D and your mood just goes, yeah, I feel great, only because you're getting all of those other vitamins and that's our life not dependent on our partner. So when we spend too much time with our partner, what happens is that we start feeling dissatisfied. It's not enough, it's not enough. Our, our adrenaline response starts to happen and a woman's brain goes into bias where she will start to look at what's wrong. Her mind just can't go, not, can't go anywhere else. It's just stuck there. When she's in a place of negativity, a man, if he loves his wife, he's gonna have more mirror activity. 
Now, we know in science, the brain has these mirror cells. That's how we learn as children. Monkey see, monkey do, basically. It's the primitive part of the brain, is that we see our parents walk this way, they talk this way, they react this way. The brain learns how to be a human being by watching our parents or watching our caretakers around us, people who are responsible for us. We mirror that. If somebody is happy with us, we go, oh, I'm happy with them and I'm happy with myself. We learn who we are by how other people treat us. So now when you're in an intimate relationship, particularly once you've had sex, it really activates those mirror cells. So if my wife is feeling dissatisfied with me, disapproving of me, criticizing me, what will happen, and that's her reality, temporarily in that moment, my brain will mirror it and now I'm gonna criticize her and attack her back. And that's what happens, how we trigger each other in relationships, is we misinterpret our partners, but also we simply mirror our partner's emotional states. And men are not adept at handling their emotional states. Women, with a little practice and a little safety, can actually move through negative feelings very quickly. Men will tend to want to put their negative feelings into action to solve a problem. Why? Because testosterone is generated by solving problems. But solving problems by being angry doesn't solve any problem, and so you feel like a failure, and you just become more angry and angry and angrier. So let me give you a little foundation of what happens inside of men's hormones. Testosterone is when there's a problem, I'm gonna solve it, and I can do it. I know how to do it. My testosterone goes up, I feel confident, I'm moving towards it, and I'm doing my very best. If my very best doesn't work, then my testosterone starts to go down and my estrogen starts to go up. You see, when men lose confidence, that's when their female hormones increase. And at that time, what he needs to do is something that's gonna bring those female hormones down and his testosterone back up. And what would that be? Well, realize, stop doing what doesn't work. If you speak when you're feeling angry and you're a man, your anger will only increase your emotions will only increase. Unless when you speak, it solves the problem. You know, if I get angry and my partner says, oh, you're right, I'm terrible, I'm no good, I'll do whatever you want, you're the boss, of course his anger will go away. But women today are not gonna tolerate that. We want equality. So these are old fashioned remedies. You know, if you want a peaceful husband, you just say, yes, 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 sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. That's old fashioned. We want equality now. And we all want equality. I have daughters. I want them to be in equal relationships. I want my wife to feel my equal. This is where we want to be. But equality does not mean sameness. And if we want to achieve equality, we want to have mutual respect for each other. So ultimately, we have to learn how women need to feel loved, how men need to feel loved, primarily. Now, certainly we all need all the kinds of love, but let's look at certain kinds of love that stimulate testosterone. When you appreciate someone for what they did for you, oh, you did this for me, I feel so good, that person feels successful. Success always generates testosterone. Let's say that person makes a mistake and you go, no big deal, not a problem. Then they feel, oh, okay, I'm still loved. That's called acceptance, no big deal, acceptance. That raises testosterone, I get another chance. And that's the third one, which is trust. When you ask someone for help, actually what you're doing is trusting that they're gonna be there for you. Trusting that what they do is gonna be good enough. Trusting that if it's not good enough, it's okay, it's no big deal, you appreciate the effort. So there's three words here I've implied here. Appreciation, acceptance, and trust. These are all forms of love that everybody needs, but if you wanna build somebody's testosterone, you focus on making sure you're giving lots of that. Now, the other, har the other kinds of love that I'm gonna mention now, three kinds, help their increase estrogen. Now, ultimately, where men need to feel successful for testosterone, women need to feel safe for estrogen. When you feel safe, your estrogen levels start to come up. And of course, what is safety? It means I can reveal anything. I can become naked with you. I can open my heart and know that I will, be re I will have the response of unconditional love. You see, you can't get that in the world. We're always hiding ourselves from the world on an emotional level, particularly. And when you can open up and share whatever's inside of you with your partner, estrogen skyrockets and you fall in love, you bond, you're able to feel those emotions. You know, so many women I help, they're in their 40s and 50s and biologically already their estrogen levels are dropping down. They go, I just can't fall in love. I can't, I can't feel it. I meet all these nice men. I can't fall in love. What is it? I say, you're not doing enough to pump your estrogen up. And there's no such thing as too old to make the right amount of estrogen for you for that age. 
Yes, your estrogen levels will become lower as you get older, but that's because estrogen is not being used to make babies. Okay, once your eggs are done, your body doesn't need to make as much estrogen, but it needs the right balance of estrogen to, to testosterone. And then you will feel that well-being where you can actually have romantic feelings, which is generating 20 times more estrogen than a man would be producing. And so this is the secret of creating lasting passion as well as harmony in the home and lasting love and opening your heart and being able to grow as an individual and learn this new lesson of when we're too far on the male side, if you're a woman, how to come back to the female side. Well, I mentioned what you can do as a woman to come back to your female side is the things that you love to do, you get to do, you, you don't have to do, they're enjoying to you. That's very key for both progesterone and estrogen. But what a man can do for you to help along the way is provide the three kinds of love I'm about to mention. And that is, uh, just as a man needs to feel trusted, a woman needs to feel you care about her. And ironically, men, if you demonstrate in a hundred different ways that you prioritize and care about her and feel empathy towards her, she will trust you more. They're complementary. Basically, if you trust a man that he's doing his best, he will care more about you. So caring is a very important message for women. Now, I want to feel my partner cares about me, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for a woman is caring, showing interest. Second form of love that women need a lot to balance their hormones is understanding. That's why back when I wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, the number one complaint women had is men don't listen, men don't listen, they don't understand, they don't hear me. And men are going, of course I hear her. And she talked and talked and talked and talked. Yeah, men, but what you did is you interrupted her and gave her solutions or you tried to rush her along and say, what's the point? You have to recognize those things just give the message to her you don't understand. Because often women don't know what they want to say until they say it. They know there's a lot of different things inside. A great metaphor for this I use in my seminars is a woman in her purse. When she has that big purse, you pull out this, you pull out this, you pull out this. There's more in there. Sometimes she has to sort through the whole thing. It takes time to get through the whole thing. And a guy's like assuming that the most important thing is the first thing she's saying. Like, oh, what's the point? Why are you telling me this? It's kind of like foreplay. It's opening up. It's not rushing to the goal. It's taking some time to open up. So women need that feeling. No one's rushing them. No one's pushing them. Whereas men like to rush, get to the point, get in my Ferrari, take off, run through those gears, get to the goal. That's our male side. That produces testosterone. And there's some women that like to drive the Ferrari. That's always the case. But if they're stressed in their life, they're not able to fall in love. They don't fall asleep at night when they want to. <laughs> that means they need to come back to their female side. And often coming back to the female side does not feel natural. And for men, coming back to the male side, if you're on your female side, too emotional, does not feel natural. We have to recognize it takes willpower when you're out of balance to come back into balance. So, for example, many people know that if you eat too many desserts, it's not good for you. And if you say to somebody after they had one cookie, you shouldn't have another cookie. They say, no, no, I want another cookie. It feels very natural to have another cookie and another cookie and another cookie and another... <laughs> <laughs> this is, it feels good, but how do you feel the next day? You don't feel so great because you ate too many. But still, it feels natural to eat those cookies, and it doesn't feel natural to stop. It takes willpower. So what we have to recognize is when women are too far on their male side, everything I recommend to do on the female side and how to communicate effectively with your partner on the female side to support your female side doesn't come naturally. It doesn't feel natural and often feels foreign. It feels like it's not me. That's what we have to recognize. You're not the expert of you unless you are the expert and you're happy and fulfilled and your relationship is thriving. And I know many people are listening who say, oh, I am an expert. I'm so good at this. It's my partner. No, you're too negative. You're not seeing your part of it. If you have a problem in your relationship, you are half the problem. That's the third thing I talk about is responsibility for how you feel. Your partner is not responsible for how you feel. If your heart is closed, your job is to open your heart. But as a man, I know I can help my wife. I can't open her heart. You can never change your partner. If we give up trying to change our partners, our lives will be so much better. But we can support our partners. We cannot make it worse. So how do we help support and not make it worse? I show I care. That's my four hugs a day. That's demonstrating that I care. I don't wait for her to come to me for a hug. I find her because I know hugs will help raise her estrogen. And if I do something that raises her estrogen, it actually bumps up my testosterone because I feel more successful. I'm conscious and aware of doing the things that can help her to be happier. 
help her to find her happiness. But she has to recognize she's got a job here too of doing the things that will help produce her estrogen and not saying, oh, I don't care about the hugs. Oh, I don't care about the flowers. Oh, I don't care about romantic dates anymore. You always find the wrong thing anyway. That's her problem. She used to come back to giving him space, giving him the opportunity to show he cares. Next one is to listen to understand what she's going through, giving a woman understanding, hearing her, feeling what she feels is a oh, huge estrogen stimulator for a woman. And the third is something most people don't talk about. They get it backwards, is respect. You know, yes, men deserve respect, but women need respect. You see, we all deserve respect. Women need respect. When you do things, honoring a woman's wishes and needs, you know, this is what's gonna pump her estrogen up even more. When a man marries a woman, it's not like she kneels before him. He kneels before her. He says, yes, you are the one I give my life for. You are the one I'm here to serve. Serving, selfless service is the most powerful of a testosterone producer there is as long as when you're serving, you're uh, successfully appreciated and rewarded. And reward is, for a man, the reward from his wife is the message that he is trusted, he is accepted, and he is appreciated. And what do women need in order to find that love, to open their heart, is to be in a relationship where she feels I can authentically be myself, share myself, somebody really cares about me, and somebody's got my back. They respect me. I'm a priority in their life. So yes, we all need all those six kinds of love, but to restore the hormonal balance, we need to develop new skills for honoring the female side of a woman, the masculine side of a man. What a man will typically need to do, and this is during COVID, we have to recognize that men, in order to feel the desire for intimacy, they need to pull away. They need to raise their testosterone up. And that was one of the ideas of Men are From Mars. It was so popular as men need their cave time. Cave time is where you don't do anything that's for somebody else. It's selfish time. It's time to go to your cave, watch TV, play a video game. For me, I'm very efficient in it. I meditate, I pray. Anytime you do something on your own looking for happiness and fulfillment, you're going to raise your testosterone if you're a man, which doesn't involve pleasing somebody else. You're doing it just for yourself. So also I exercise. Exercising your muscles is very important to lower your cortisol levels, your stress levels inside of a man's body, more so than a woman, okay? For her, it can help a bit, but for her, it's to do things that she enjoys doing. So if we're in COVID, what we want to do, because 80% of our life is gone. We're at home all the time. We don't have all this interaction with other people and doing all these different things to find our own set point of happiness, and then our partner can make us happier, so what men need to do is they need to take time to pull away and do things that produce testosterone, which is anything you're good at, anything you're successful at, uh, anything that doesn't require depending on someone else for your fulfillment. Now that's for men. For women, they need to do things that are dependent on others for their fulfillment. You know, when you go talk to your doctor, actually your estrogen levels shoot up because you're saying, I depend on you for something I can't give myself. So one of the reasons more women will go to doctors than men, way more women go to doctors than men. Because men are like, what do I need somebody for? I can do it myself. And a woman go, oh, I need help, I need help. It's an estrogen stimulator. But there's so many other things you can do. Anytime you're learning something, taking a class, and if you're at home and you're stuck, you can't go out in the world, there's so much you can learn online, classes, singing classes, dancing classes, yoga classes, aerobic classes, where you feel that you're learning from somebody. And for both men and women, anytime you're learning something, blood flow goes to the front part of the brain. So this is a time to educate ourselves. And right now you're learning about how to have better relationships. So let's put this into practice now how to create a scenario, a game you can play, and then we'll finish up. A game that you can play during this time, 20 minutes is all it takes to balance your hormones. It's a supercharger for your hormones. So what hormones do men need? Testosterone. What are the symptoms of low testosterone? Low libido, grumpiness, irritability, uh, addiction, um, passiveness, moodiness neediness. All oh, that's low testosterone in men, or of course anger, which is the really low testosterone, high estrogen in men. How to get out of that place for men, how to bump his testosterone back up, how they can use their relationship to bump it up. And for women, how to knock up her estrogen. 
Okay, certainly uh, the symptoms of, high, of low estrogen, high testosterone is feeling overwhelmed, feeling stressed, worrying too much, feeling anxious, not being able to sleep at night, not feeling love, not feeling libido. If you are having sex, not enjoying it. All of these things are symptoms of low estrogen. So how to bump up that estrogen? Oh, it's amazing, this game. So how do you play it? You gotta know the rules of a game. So it's 20 minutes, and during this 20 minutes, a woman doesn't do anything for herself except ask him to do it for her. So she has to practice asking for help. Oh my gosh, some women go, I don't need help, I can do it myself. Yes, we know you can do it yourself. But asking for help and letting someone do it for you and then appreciating what they do. So that's your focus. And if you have to fake it in the beginning, fake it. In five minutes, you might have to be faking it, but after a few minutes, the hormones will come up and you'll see it will start working. So it's called genie in the bottle. Your man is a genie, all powerful. I can do everything. What would you like me to do? As many wishes as you like, I'm here for you. And when I do it, I kind of imagine myself at one of those flight attendants in first class where they say, oh, Mr. Gray, you've arrived. Oh, we'll do anything you want, anything you have, a request, I'm right here for you. What would you like? Any need you have. <laughs> so you feel someone is taking care of you. So women, he's going to be your genie, and you can ask for whatever you want. And your job is to ask for as many things as possible in 20 minutes. Because it turns out the way women's biology is when it comes to estrogen is big acts of love or little acts of love stimulate the same kind of estrogen. So you could do, give her 50 roses, you're going to get a spike of estrogen. You can give her one rose, a spike of estrogen. So little things. And often when women have low estrogen, it takes many, many little things to raise it up. If you were doing a big thing, it would take the whole 20 minutes to do one thing. You're just going to get a little bump. So you want to do lots of little things. It might be run upstairs and get me, or just go upstairs and get me some lavender uh, for a foot massage. And so he runs, okay, you're a genie, you're all powerful, you're very efficient and effective. You run up and do it with a smile. Oh, your wish is my command, as you wish, I would love to. And you go up, you play with this, and you come and you do the foot massage, and what foot would you like first? And Because you have to give him instructions, you have to give him orders, basically, and he's happy to provide. Why is he happy to provide? because he knows, he anticipates he's going to be appreciated. He also knows it's only 20 minutes. So you can't ask him to do something like, and I want you to always remember to turn out the lights in the living room. Well, that's talking about the future. No, 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 has to be something, th many things he can do right here in the moment. I'd like you to make me some orange juice. That would feel so good. Oh, would you clean out the sink? It's been getting, you know, kind of old there. Wash it with a scrub with the, with the handle. Give him specific instructions, make a request, and watch him do it. Be present with him and don't do anything for yourself unless there's an exception. Maybe you want to sit and read a book while he does things for you. Everything you do for yourself at that time should be something that's pleasing to you and what he does is increasing the pleasure for you. And just for 20 minutes, give a big hug at the end and then separate for a little while and see what happens. You'll feel so good and you come back to that, that balanced hormones where you can now take 80% of your happiness dependent upon things you do and only 20% looking to your partner. Because when we're out of balance, we tend to look for more from our partner. Because we remember that, oh, when I had all my vitamins and they came into my life, the brain goes, they made me so happy. So why aren't they making me happy now? There's this feeling of dissatisfaction. When that comes up, any irritation, annoyance, your mind is circling on negativity, that's the time to take time for yourself. And when a man is starting to get angry, he needs to stop talking. Women, you need to stop asking him questions because usually a man will walk away at a certain point. You say, why are you walking away? Don't you love me? Why did you do this? And she'll often ask all these questions and engage him in the conversation when he needs to stop talking and do something that makes him feel good. Driving his car can also be a very simple one. If he likes his car, most men do. Because when you drive your car, you're actually in danger, but you're solving the problem by being driving safely. So go drive your car, put on the stereo, go for a walk, go, race, uh, go, go for a jog, use your muscles. As soon as you start using muscles, if you're a man, your adrenaline burns off, you're able to come back to an open-hearted place. Particularly what helps you come back to an open-hearted place is reflect on what the argument was about and immediately your brain is gonna do its old habit, which we do in the monkey part of our brain, the childlike part of our brain, the out of balance part of our brain. We'll start to blame our partner. So that's okay. Observe, reflect on what your brain does when it's stressed. Then don't go, don't go to try to change your partner. Once you've sort of seen what they did wrong, now look at what you did wrong. Because every problem is you. 
and, and them too, but changing them doesn't do anything. Changing you does everything. And that's called accountability. And that's very important for men to do. Once they've sort of done something to raise their testosterone, reflect on what happened, reflect on how you contributed to the problem, and go back to your partner and demonstrate more love. You don't always have to jump back into the conversation because you're already on edge because somebody yelled or screamed or did something like that or was critical or mean. You have to just come back and soften, create a place of safety. Always in your mind, men, you have to recognize women need 10 times more messages that they are safe. And women, always remember, men need 10 times more messages that he is successful as a man providing for you the things that you need. Then you bring forth the best in your partner and bringing forth the best in a partner, we all have the opportunity to actually grow and our love for each other and sustain those feelings of attraction and passion and deepen our love as we grow in unconditional love, we grow in wisdom, and we grow in compassion. That's what relationships are about. They're an opportunity to grow. And while we're going through challenging times, this is where we can now practice these skills because we're forced to look at our own issues. Now, if your partner has misbehaved, you have big arguments and fights, they said mean things and horrible things, now you understand it wasn't them talking, it was their conditioning talking. People make the mistake of thinking, oh, your true colors have come out, this is how you truly feel, this is what you really feel. No, that's not. That's what they become when they're not their true self. That's what they become when conditioning takes over. When the heart opens, that is not who they are. So don't, don't hold your partner to what they said or what they did. Hold them what they can be. And that's the foundation of growth. And that's the forgiveness. And that's forgiving ourselves as well. So we all have permission to make mistakes and recognize that when we make those mistakes, most of the time it's just this conditioning that takes over in our brain when we're in fight or flight, when our hormones go out of balance. And that's when we can take the time, step three. Remember step one, we all need love. Step two, but we're different. We need to recognize we have different kinds of priorities for love. And step through is take responsibility for our own hormonal balance, for our own feelings, for our own happiness, and then come back with more love to give to our partner. And now you know the most powerful ways to give love to your partner. And within that realm, there's certainly things your partner likes and your partner doesn't like so much. You can adjust what I'm saying, but those three main categories, what bumps up testosterone, messages of success for men, and what bumps up estrogen for women as messages that she is safe and she is a priority.